Hello, and in this video I will show you how activation uh, works. Uh, so this is a group of properties where you can define how your inactive type of object will be activated. And here my uh, pre-fragmented column, as you can see, it's just an empty root with a bunch of fragments. And my mesh, uh, my object type is mesh root. So the same rigid components will be applied to every fragment. So in this case, I will not use any kind of activation. I uh, just want to show you how inactive object uh, behaves and simulates. So you'll see then how you can activate them. So in this case, I will just drop this rock to this the, to this inactive fragments. You can see uh, when these fragments uh, collided this this rock, they just uh, they were just pushed, uh, but they didn't fall. They were not activated. So in the same way, you can push them further. As you can see, they start pushing each other, but they do not start falling down. So this is how. Uh, inactive object simulates they are not affected by gravity and now I will use this um, object this column but in this case I will activate it and first I will show you how to activate by velocity so for this uh, fragments I set by velocity value to 1.2 and this means that the higher the value uh, the harder it will be to activate uh, your object. The harder they should be pushed with higher velocity and uh, this is wall 1.2 so again I will initialize my rock. So here you can see how many fragments were activated uh, more than the half of the fragments uh, were activated and these fragments still stay inactive and for this column I will use wall 2.1 so there will be the higher wall the higher, the higher velocity should be applied to them, so they will be activated. So in this case, not too much fragments were activated, as you can see. So this is how activation by velocity works. And in my uh, next uh, reference, I want to show you the difference between uh, materials. So in this case, I have, uh, as you can see for the physics, I have concrete material applied to all to both of these um, fragments but I have different materials for my rock so as you can see in this case I'm using the glass material for this rock and for this rock I'm using concrete which means the uh, mass of this object will be higher than mass of this object and this means that it will affect this higher velocity uh, so let's activate them So now you can see the, uh, the heavier your object, uh, the higher velocity it will apply. And again, uh, in activation, you can see that the value by uh, activation value by velocity is the same for all fragments. Uh, the difference, uh, this difference only because my uh, concrete rod, uh, rock has uh, much higher mass than my glass uh, rock. So this is also uh, you should, something you should consider when you will uh, try to activate your object using by velocity property. Okay, uh, next uh, next property activation is by offset. So I'll turn all this one. And again, uh, here are my two uh, object with measured components. So the same properties will be applied to every fragment here. In this case, I'm using a uh, different uh, by offset wilder for activation. So all properties are the same, except that for this one, I'm using offset 0 0.5, and for this, I'm using offset 1. And activation by offset means that uh, plugin will uh, check how far fragment uh, was moved from its original position, and when this, uh, this um, distance move distance will be higher than this value then uh, fragment will be activated so in this case more fragments will be activated because I'm using less value and in this case object have to uh, every fragment have to be moved for one unit to be activated so all properties for the rocks is the same again 
Uh, uh, okay, they will be initialized. So now you can see the fragments here started to activate earlier. And these fragments activate only when they were pushed more than one to one unit. Again, I can increase maybe 0 0.5 or maybe 8. So now they will move even more than in previous example. And here you can see the Zerg pushing them. They are moving. And only this time, and only here they start activates. So this is uh, the property you should play with to figure out which value will work better for you. And also, the, this is a good idea to work by velocity and by offset together. So object will not will be activated not only by one property, but uh, both of them will contribute. So okay, next uh, way to activate your object is by damage. Damage is something I will also show you in other video which will be dedicated to this damage but just to show you quickly how it works here my uh, object which I want to activate so it's uh, an active object and here I set by damage value to 50 and my damage enabled here and also I checked on here collect collision which means we can apply damage by the method or by uh, shooting uh, by gun or by exploding bomb component. But also you can collect the damage by collision. So every time object will collide with something, it will increase its current um, damage. And when this damage will be higher than this max damage, object will be demolished. But also you can activate object, but in this case you need to define this uh, while of damage here. So in this case I have while of 50 and I want to hit my inactive object by other objects. So let's start play mode. And now you can see that uh, it's while right now is zero. So let's wait for first collision. Now you can see that its current damage is 42, so uh, our object uh, is not activated yet. It's still fr uh, freeze in the air. But now another object hits it, and its current damage is 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 101. So this fragment's now activated. It starts falling down. And now you can see that after collision, next collision, it will increase its current damage even more and after all it was demolished so this way you can kind of uh, use start in act start some object as an active then activate it by collision and then at some point it will be demolished next uh, way to activate is by activator and activator is uh, another component which will have its own video tutorial but again i just shortly will show you how to uh, quickly show you how it works uh, this is a just an uh, empty object with refactivated component which has its own gizmo. Basically what you need to do is just uh, just to put some fragments inside this gizmo. Uh, and of course first you need to turn on this by activator checkbox for the fragments which you want to activate by activator. So on in this case they will be activated. So you can move your object now, your activator, and you'll see whenever it uh, kind of collides with fragments, uh, it activates them. Also, there are some properties to animate this activator and some other properties. I will talk about them in special tutorial, but this is the way it works. So also something you may need in some cases. Okay. Next a way to activate your inactive objects is by impact. And impact is something uh, only gun component provides. Uh, it allows you to shoot your objects, to hit them physically and apply damage. Here's damage value. So this way you can demolish, you can kind of collect uh, damage for your object and only at some point uh, it will be demolished, but also you can activate your object again. I have uh, the same um, uh, group of fragments here. And I turn on here activation by impact. I also has by offset activation, so they will not freeze in the air if they will be moved too far. 
L again. All you need to do is just uh, start shooting your object. I will create just one single shot. And this is my uh, impact, area, impact area, my, my impact radius. Here I can change it. So maybe I will set it bigger. And strength will define how hard they will be pushed. So I will just make one shot. And again, you can see that only fragments inside this impact uh, radius area were, were activated. So this way you can just uh, uh, activate your inactive object by shooting them. Another quick way to activate your objects. Next uh, activation type is by connectivity. Connectivity is something also will have its own special video tutorial because uh, in this case you need to use special uh, component. Uh, sorry. Where is it? 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 So here it is. It says uh, it in this case it, it was applied to the same object which has all the fragments, but you can you can create your own game object and apply it to it. So as I said, it will have special video tutorial. In this case, I just want to show you how it works. So in this example, I don't have I will not use connectivity the same amount of fragments I set here activation by offset and uh, by connectivity is turned off and this is a problem I want to show you so let's say you have some, some group of inactive fragments and then you start activating them and here you can see that uh, after you activated these fragments this kind of looks weird these fragments uh, are not connected to each other, but they are still frozen in the air, even though uh, they should fall down. But an active object doesn't, they do not uh, track connection with each other by default. And to do so, we need to use a connectivity component. So in this case, I applied, uh, I turned on by connectivity here. Also, I applied verify connectivity component, which will uh, check for the connectivity to each other. And when you apply that, you can see that it applies this uh, gizmo, this blue gizmo. So uh, now let me start play mode. Oh, also, I forgot to mention that when you use connectivity, you also need to define which fragments should be unyielding. Uh, as you can see, I have special object with another RFI unyielding component here at the bottom here. Which it, uh, what it uh, does, it simply uh, set this unyielding checkbox on for every fragment which is inside this gizmo. It doesn't do anything else. So you can basically set this property manually, but in case you want to quickly move your unyielding area, so you can use this component. And in this case, I defined this bottom area as unyielding, as you can see. It creates this uh, red spheres for every fragment, just to tell you that these fragments are unyielding and the rest of the fragments are green, which means they are connected with each other, but they are not unyielding. So this time I will do the same. I will just move this kinematic fragment here. Oh, sorry, seems like some pause. Now you can see that, um, I'll show you again. So it start activates some fragments, and then it checks for their connectivity with each other. So here you can see after all fragments were activated here, uh, other fragments, upper, upper fragments, uh, uh, figured out that they are not connected with bottom unyielding fragments anyhow. So they also were, were activated. So in this way, you can create kind of more believable activation. Instead of activating all the fragments, you can activate only uh, fragments where, do you, where you, you want and the rest of the fragments will be activated automatically. And another reference here, I set the same unyielding uh, component at the, at the top of the, of the group of the fragments. So you can see unyielding uh, fragments right uh, now at the top of this column. And again, I will move this uh, kinematic object. And now this time uh, the bottom part was uh, act activated because it was not connected with its unyielding fragments. 
So this is how uh, connectivity work for activation of inactive objects. And the last way to uh, activate your inactive objects is simply by method. So I will start play mode and nothing fancy. Uh, in editor, you can do the same using this activate button. And your object will be activated. But the way it works is just uh, you need to get your refired script. And here it is. So basically using this uh, activate method, you can activate your object manually inside your code at any moment. So I guess uh, that's it with activation. Uh, thank you for watching.